Hey people, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Welcome to another awesome Iron Maiden related video. Today uh, is a very special day. Last night over in, where was it? So Slovenia, 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 wherever, I'm sorry, wherever that is in the world, Iron Maiden kicked off their Days of Future Past tour, which is, I'm sure you're aware, but just in case you're not, they're touring a combination of their classic album, Somewhere in Time, from 1986, as well as a little dabble in their latest work, Senjutsu, from 2021. Putting these two classic albums together, you end up getting the Days of Future Past tour. Now, this one, this one isn't just any old, you know, fancy world tour. This isn't just a new Senjutsu world tour. This is a very, very interesting tour because it finally showcases an Iron Maiden album that, for the better for the better part of their career, has been, you know, brushed to the side, put under the table, just straight up forgotten about. Of course, I'm talking about Somewhere in Time. Yes, it's been toured, obviously. We had the massive World Slavery Tour in 1985 for Power Slave, and then they had the massive um, Seventh Son Tour. I don't know if that was a world tour, but it was... Definitely, you know, big. And so was this album. They definitely toured this, but it was nowhere near to the extent of what the World Slavery Tour was. However, now it's finally getting some light. There's there's so many classic tracks on this album that have never been played live, and, and half of them were finally debuted last night. So with that in mind, we're gonna we're gonna go through the set list together. Just give you my thoughts and you know opinions. This isn't a reaction to the set list. I already know what the set list is. So it's just me talking about whether or not I think that's a good song, whether or not it's a bad song, whether or not that should go there in the set list. So yeah, I'm super excited. It's a very, very special day. So without further ado, let's go to the set list and let me tell you my thoughts on whether or not it's a good set list or not. So obviously, opening the set list, we have caught somewhere in time. Now notice straight away that they announced, they put up a post saying, um, you know, uh, 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 spoiler alert, we're about to, we're about to share the set list with you guys. So if you don't want to know what it is, you know, click off now. They've, to my knowledge, they've never done that before. So that just shows that they're aware of the pressure that they're under as a band to give us a good show, you know, because obviously everyone, there's Somewhere in Time has this massive, massive cult following, and rightly so, it's a fantastic album. So the band are aware that the fans want this album live. So the fact that they're posting little, like, Eddie arts for each song only shows that they've heard us and, you know, they, they've built us up. So, yeah, not much to say. Caught Somewhere in Time opening the show. I've got Setlist FM in front of me, very handy website. First live performance since 1987. Um, that makes me sick, but also awesome. I'm glad that they're not opening the show with like the Sinjutsu half of the album because we because we've already we've already heard all that. You know the the Sinjutsus, the Stratigos, the writing on the walls. You know we've heard them all. So to get to get an opening with the Somewhere in Time album is just awesome i think it's great caught somewhere in time is a genuine fantastic song anyway it's probably one of the more awesome album openers let alone tour openers so yeah i think that's really awesome coming up second stranger in a strange land um uh it's an interesting spot for it to be second i'll tell you that much i've got nothing wrong with stranger in a strange land it's a fantastic song it's weirdly catchy and boppy one of the simpler songs of somewhere in time but does it deserve to go second i feel like it's already like some uh stranger in a strange land sort of brings the tone not the tone but you know just kind of slows the mood down you kind of want fast energetic upbeat songs for like the first three at least but i mean you know you could have put What's the second song of uh, Somewhere in Time? Oh, actually, I've got the album right here. It's, it's Wasted Years, isn't it? See, Wasted Years is a classic song, so we can't really have that second because it's it's too well known. Do you know what I mean? But, and then you feel like if they'd put anything else off the album, like Sea of Madness, uh, no, nah, Heaven Can Wait, no, nah, so, yeah. Listening to them, you, Stranger kind of fits. So yeah, cool song, happy with it. And then we jump off Somewhere in Time and then we get into some Senjutsu songs, The Writing on the Wall. Now again, this one is has already been played live quite a bit. Everyone knows it. We all know it. We all love it. It's a cool song. Um, yeah, I think it deserves to go. You know, in the in the first half, one because it's a single, and um, even fans who probably you know, well, I was about to say the fans who haven't bought the album. But let's be honest, are there any Maiden fans who didn't buy Senjutsu? You know, 
Maiden's fan base, Maiden's fan base is so strong that even if Senjutsu was terrible, everyone would have still bought it. So we all still know these songs. So Bright on the Wall, it's, yeah, I think it fits. It's perfect. It's cool. And of course, we already have that Eddie up there. So next song, Days of Future Past, a live debut. Um, the Days of Future Past, obviously, I feel like you have to include that song because it's more or less the name of the tour. So it would, would be a bit weird to include a song like that not to include a song like that, sorry. I won't lie though, it's not my favorite song off the Senjutsu album. It's one of the more simpler ones. Um, I think it's I think it's the shortest song. Um, but I mean, like I say, it's the name of the tour, so throw it on. And now what I do kind of like is they've chunked the two albums together, you know? So we had two songs from Somewhere in Time and then we've got two songs from Senjutsu. So they, it's not exactly all over the place and it's not, um, half and half like some of us can predicted would you stop bopping stupid computer making noises you're interrupting me so that's kind of cool uh next is the time machine another live debut off the senjutsu album um this song from what i remember is actually kind of cool an interesting choice though like you've got that middle chunk of the senjutsu album to kind of pick and choose right you've got the days of future past the time machine and uh there's one other I don't want to say Darkest Hour because I don't think it's Darkest Hour, but... Oh, it's Lost in a Lost World. They could have maybe put that on because it's a nine minute song. They're not afraid of chucking nine minute songs in the middle of the set. But The Time Machine, I remember being a funky song. It sort of reminded me of Hallowed Be Thy Name just a little bit. It had like that real typical Maiden riff. And that's probably why it's in the set list because um, it's like a traditional Maiden sounding song. Like it's got... Is it, it's, it's got, you know what I mean, it's just got that real good typical Iron Maiden riff sound and that's awesome. So I approve of the Time Machine being in there. I think it's cool and it sits at a good spot as well. And then track six, they throw in a wild card, nothing off, sin, nothing from Sinjutsu and nothing from uh, Somewhere in Time, but they throw in a number of the Beast song and it's not even like a, a normal number of the Beast song. It's the Prisoner. <laughs> Which, uh, in front of me, says hasn't been played since 2014. Uh, I can't really immediately think back to what tour they were on in 2014, if they were on any tour in specific. But to chuck the prisoner in there is weird. I do, I remember when they came here for their Book of Souls tour, they randomly threw in the Children of the Damned. So I'm wondering if they're just sort of like mirroring that. Like, you know, not really paying homage to their great albums, but also it's just like, what a random song to throw in there, The Prisoner. It's a great song, it has a cool intro, but it, I don't know if like, will it fit the pace? Like it's, oh, I mean, it's a faster song, isn't it? So like, it's got a cool verse and everything. And it's a fun sing-along one as well. So like I say, just some random homage from their elder days that Maiden fans, will, obviously Maiden fans will eat that up because we're a sucker for stuff that's not really played often. So so yeah, cool. So far, it's doing very well. There's not much, like the most predicted song on there so far is probably the writing on the wall. The fact that they haven't got the Senjutsu title song is odd, but like I say, maybe that's just because we've already heard all that stuff. So moving on type thing. And then we get back into a Senjutsu song with Death of the Celts, which is pretty much, you know, the Clansman 2.0. This one was predicted. I think a lot of us uh, assumed that this was going to be on the set list just because, you know, Steve has so much fun uh, with the Clansman. So you would assume he's going to put Death of the Celts in this gig as well. And rightly so, because what's a Maiden show without a 12 minute you know, mood, epic song, right? I think it, yeah, it just ties into, um, it'll tie in like the Clans Band. It's a great uh, crowd song. Um, and it, like I say, it, all the eddies for these songs, they look great. Even even this one that doesn't actually have an eddy in it, but it's, it's still graveyardy and looks awesome. I imagine all these little photos that they've made for us are gonna be the backdrops. So yeah. And then, so yeah, all good. Death of the Celts is great. Can I play with madness comes on next? And when I saw that, I was like, what? Why? Why? Um, if you know anything about me, you'll know that I absolutely can't stand Can I Play With Madness. So the fact that they've randomly thrown in a Seventh Sun song just makes me ill. You know, if you're gonna throw in a Seventh Sun song, 
chuck in the evil that men do. I know it's overplayed, but it's, you know, it's the one that we love. Anyway, this one, that, uh, the thing in front of me says that that hasn't actually been played since 2014. That's now nearly 10 years ago, so no wonder they probably looked at it and thought, you know what, we haven't played for a while, Madness. And everyone loves Madness, obviously, because it's a, it's a fun sing-along song, so irksome, but okay. So again, a random one that's just thrown in there, a bit like The Prisoner. And then the next song, we go back in time to somewhere in time with Heaven Can Wait, first performance since 2008. Now, that can't be, I, I don't want to say, but I, I'm pretty sure, really? 2008. I feel like they play this all the damn time. But then, at the same time, why would this be wrong? You know, I remember seeing... Did I see Heaven Can Wait Live? They played it on the Somewhere Back in Time tour, which was 2009, the Australia Australasia leg, so I assume. Like, it's a cool song, but at the same time, it's... I It's not my favourite, but like... They probably chuck it in a lot because of that wo ho ho section that they've got. And, you know, when you go to these South American countries, they, they love that section. You know, it's like a football song. You know, they all go nuts. But, like, yeah, that's probably why it's in there. It keeps everybody hyped up and bouncing and stuff. But th that's all good. And then we get to the song that, you know, most of us, if not all of us, were super, super hyped for. And really, really banking on them putting in. And of course, I'm talking about Alexander the Great. This song is the epic off Somewhere in Time. It's the eighth track. It's nearly nine minutes. And it's never been played live before. Until last night. That must have been a historic day in metal. Because imagine being in the crowd in Slovenia and hearing that song live. Oh my god, especially if you're of the older generation and you like saw all this stuff way back when it was new and then to come back to it. I can only imagine how the band must feel playing Alexander the Great, you know, recorded it 40 years ago nearly and never played it since until now in front of a whole crowd that knows every note, every word. It's like, god damn guys, why don't we play this sooner? I tell you, the whole set list could have been completely different, but as long as Alexander the Great was on there, then I reckon they couldn't have done it wrong. Because Alexander is just a fantastic song, and it's almost hard to believe that it hasn't been played live. I've got no idea why it was never played on there. Probably because, think about it, when it came, when the album came out, right, Power Slave was probably the best thing they'd ever done um, at the time. Somewhere in Time was a bit different. Maybe it didn't blow up as well. And they were still under the hype of their 13-minute Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner epic. So that probably overtook in the set list and carried on till a good while. And then they brought it back for Somewhere Back in Time. But anyway, Alexander the Great finally gets some... some I was going to say radio play, but it finally gets some live play. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll go down fantastic. Uh, number 11 in this gig is Fear of the Dark, another fan favourite that is always, you know, a fan favourite, it's crowd favourite, um, from obviously neither album, from Fear of the Dark, um, am I a bit over this song? I mean, probably, but at the same time, you, it's almost, ex it's expected now, you can't really go to a Maiden gig without hearing Fear of the Dark, because, you know, fans will consider it a wasted experience. Um, again, it's a great crowd opener, so like I'm not shocked to see it in the in the set list, but at the same time, would not have been mad if it wasn't in there. But yeah. And then of course Iron Maiden the song, which indicates the end of the show. You know, every gig ends with that song ever since it was written. And then the Encore. Now the Encore is interesting. Hell on Earth opens the Encore. Now, it's not the first time that they've opened an Encore with another 12-minute, you know, ballad epic type thing. And again, a bit like Alexander, if there's one song from Senjutsu that needed to be live, it's definitely this one. I'm a bit gutted, though, that um, the parchment's not on the set list. But, I mean, we do have Death of the Cult, so that's two out of three Harris 10-minute songs. So, I'll take that. Hell on Earth is a fantastic song, and I imagine that live it's kind of will kind of be like when the wild wind blows. Very moving, very powerful, very emotional. Just a all-out good time, which is what we want from 12-minute Iron Maiden songs. And then the Trooper comes on, obviously. We all know the Trooper. Again, a bit like uh, Fear of the Dark, what's a Maiden song? What's a Maiden gig without the Trooper? 
and um, and then Wasted Years comes in to end the show. And this says first live performance since 2017. Now that has to be the Book of Souls tour. I remember that. But and but again, those last two, Trooper and the Wasted, you know, they're fun, energetic, small um, gig closers. Get everyone hyped to remind them, you know, this was a great show. And that's the end of the gig. Notice anything that's missing? Like that's normally there. I can immediately think of two, obviously. Um, this has to be like, this has to be the first time since it was written that Hallowed Be Thy Name is not on the set list. That's crazy. Surely you take out Fear of the Dark and replace it with Hallowed Be Thy Name. I'm, I'm a bit godsmacked that Hallowed's not on the set list. Um, but hey, all good, I'm not in charge. And obviously the second one that I'm immediately thinking of is Number of the Beast. Now you could, ah, I was gonna say, you could take out the Wasted Years and put on Number of the Beast, but then at the same time, you've got to remember what tour it is, eh? The Future Past tour, we're celebrating Summer in Time and Senjutsu, so we can't exactly take out Wasted Years and replace it with the Beast because it's not that tour. Um, but then again, maybe take out the Trooper and replace it with Number of the Beast. But then at the same time, will there be a riot because the Trooper wasn't in the set list? I don't know. Take out the Prisoner and put in Number of the Beast. I'm just saying, you know, I'm stoked with this set list. Like, also as well, we have to remember, this is only, this is gig one of a tour that's going to go on for probably a good year and a half, knowing them. So... They might change it up depending on where they go. You know, they might take out the prisoner every now and then and chuck in something else. You just don't know. As long as they take, as long as they don't take out all the big ones, Alexander, Hell on Earth, and um, and Death of the Cows as well. As long as they don't take those out, I think it'll be fine. All in all, pretty mean set list. Like I say, it's literally the first night. It might change through city to city, but who knows? Um, I won't give it ten out of ten. But I will give it like an eight. Unfortunately, having madness in the set list knocks it back for me just a little bit. But yeah, honestly, I can't moan too much. It's just me ranting about how much we love these songs and how often we hear these certain songs. Let me know down below if this is your ideal set list. Um, let me know if you think it's terrible. Are you seeing them on this tour? Are you like me and your country hasn't actually had tour dates announced, so you're just assuming that they're coming? Um, it's all good fun. We're all Maiden fans and we all know it and we all love it. Thanks for hanging out with me, team, while I sit here and go through a set list of a gig that I really, really hope to see one day. Hopefully someone can look after my boy while I go. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, like, yeah, let me know down below all your favourites and keep an eye out for the next video, as always. But until that happens, team, stay inside, stay safe. I'm going to jam this set list in a playlist and I will see you all in the next video. See you later.